Hey everyone, it is layout update time. So today's video I'm going to be talking about my switch machines and finally getting those set up and what I'm actually doing to uh, integrate these in the layout. So I've always decided I wanted to use the tortoise machines. I picked a bunch of these up, I mean, more than 10 years ago at a, uh, a train show for pretty cheap. Um, they're not the cheapest switches I know, but I really like them for underboard mounting. Um, they work really well, they're quiet, and I'm going to use them. But this has been a blocker for me for quite some time in the layout now. I mean, this is going back almost a year when I planned on starting to do this. But uh, it's probably one of the least fun things to work on, uh, installing these machines and doing all the necessary electronics with it. And I've just been putting it off forever. And it's finally reached the point where it's just been a blocker for me for a number of things, which I'll walk over the layout here in a minute and talk about it. But I'll show what I'm doing here for these uh, in terms of the actual layout configuration. So... Uh, the goal was is I've got 14 switches on my layout that I need actual ways to control them So I made these little boards basically um, to house the switch along with some LEDs and I 3d printed design and 3d printed some of these little um, Bezels that will actually be on the layout the front of the layout to control the switches and the goal of them is is I'll have one of these per switch essentially uh, kind of in line with each switch on the layout where they're located uh, And it'll just be a manual control. So I'll flip the switch to you know select which direction I want the switch to be thrown to, and it'll just be part of operating the layout. Uh, no computer control, nothing fancy, just simple switches with a control panel that just shows me the state of the switch. Having the LED was key too, especially for the switches on the back of the layout, because uh, it's kind of hard to reach. The layout's about three feet deep, but based on the height of it, which is kind of high, which is the height that I wanted to, I can't really get back there and manually throw them, uh, which is what led me to do all the machines instead of having any type of manual switch or just manually throwing the switches by reaching over to the layout. So. Uh, in terms of wiring, uh, those that are familiar with these switches know that there's multiple ways you can wire these up to. The way that they like you to do it typically is just to wire them with a double pole, double throw switch, and basically just have it thrown and, and stall there on a, on, from a single DC line, reversing the polarity of the motor to reverse direction. Um, the electrical engineer in me hates the idea that you just have these things stalled altogether. I know it's fine. They say it's even fine. You know, uh, you know they draw 15 to 16 milliamps each, which is nothing. That's at 12 volts too, I think. So it's not that big, but I didn't like the idea of it. So I'm actually doing the split supply method where I'm running plus and minus voltage um, from a supply that I'm running here. In this case, for me, I'm going to do plus 5 and minus 5 volts because it allows you <clears throat> it allows you just to use a single pull double throw switch, which I like because I can do momentary switches as well, which I have here, which that way the motor doesn't stall. So you hold it until the actual position switches. When it's in the final position, you let go, and then it's good. So um, I'm running my switches, too, at 5 volts. Uh, it moves them a little bit slower, which I like, and you know, it slows things down. And two, underneath the layout, I've got one mounted now. You can barely hear this thing. It makes like no noise from on top of the layout, which I really like. So, Plus, with all the little panels, the LEDs will just look cool on there. So that's kind of the uh, plan I need. I, you know, I'm going with now, and again, these boards, because I needed so many, I just made them. It was just easier to do that way. So I've had these sitting around, like I said, almost a year. I mean, I designed these back in almost a year to the day, actually, 11, 20, 21. Um, let's see, dated them there when I actually made these. So finally, a year later, getting around to mount these, getting them done, and that'll allow me to get a lot of other things done on the layout. So I'll walk over to the layout real quick. All right, so here at the layout, and I've got my first switch installed. This switch is actually for this guy right here. So... Um, I'm going to be drilling holes along this panel to mount all these along where they go and I've kind of marked little marks where I need to, I know to need to drill uh, to put the holes in to actually mount these. So uh, I need to get all those drilled and then I'll screw these in and they'll look nice kind of sitting like there on the actual panel. Uh, I'm going to paint this black before I screw them all in though just to make it look nice. But anyway, that's kind of the plan. So I mean, nothing super exciting. You know, flip the switch and uh, switch moves. So. Again, kind of boring, but for me it's a big deal uh, just because of the blockers I've had. The main blocker is just on the back here. Um, I wanted to put my backdrop back here to finally get my backdrop in place, but I needed to get all these rear switches mounted in place before I did that. And I couldn't do anything until the switches were in because I can't get to these switches really. And these switches too, these, the switches I'm using, there's a mix of uh, Atlas and uh, Shinohara on there. They're not like the Picos and some other brands where they lock when you flip them. They'll just kind of sit there and float. So running trains basically wouldn't work because they could kind of float and I'd have derailments all the time. you got to have machines on these to accurately run the layout with them. So having that in place will uh, also allow me to finally start doing some operations, even though all the scenery isn't done. But, um, yeah, super happy to get this done. And 
now that that's in place, I can finally start doing the stuff I want to do, the fun stuff, which is the scenery, and like I said, finally actually running some trains, uh, doing some switching, which will be a lot of fun. So that's the current plan right now. So hopefully in the uh, next week here, I'll get everything mounted, get all the wiring done, and finally I can start getting my backdrop up and, and working from there. So uh, that's all I got for this video. So hopefully that was interesting, and thank you for watching.